Our objective in this lesson is to solve problems involving compounding more than once a year. Your grandmother gave you 10,000 pesos as a starting capital for a small business. Finding this insufficient, you decided to invest it in a bank that offers an 8% interest rate for a minimum of 5 years. If you have the liberty to choose the number of compounding a year, what will you choose? Annually? Semi-annually? Quarterly? Or monthly? Here is the formula that we are going to use for compounding more than once a year. F is the future amount or the future value. P is the principal amount. R is the interest rate that should be in decimal. N is the number of compoundings or conversion a year. And T is the time or number of years. Now, to determine which one is the best, we have to solve for the future amount. 10,000 here is our principal value. 8% converted into decimal 1, 2, 0 0.08 is the interest rate. 5 years is our time, and the number of conversions varies. It could be annually, semi-annually, quarterly, or monthly. But what do we mean by compounding more than once a year? How many times is more than once a year? Well, it depends. Compounding monthly means 12 times a year, quarterly, 4 times a year, semi-annually, twice a year, and if it is annually, then just once a year. Let us recall the interest rate in our previous problem. So once again, this is equivalent to 0 0.08. Now, compounding monthly means applying the interest rate 12 times a year, but it doesn't mean 12 times of 8%. The 8%, which is equivalent to 0 0.08, will be divided into 12. The result is the interest rate that will be applied for 12 times. Now, for compounding quarterly, it means 0 0.08 divided into 4, which is 0 0.02. This is the percentage that will be applied 4 times a year. Compounding semi-annually means 0 0.08 divided by 2 and that is 0 0.04. That will be applied twice a year. Just to add, compounding annually means 0 0.08 divided by 1, and that is still 0 0.08, one time charge of 0 0.08. The question is, which among these compoundings is the best? This time, let us compare the effect of different number of compoundings in a year. So we are going to solve for the future amount. Let us recall our given, and let us start with compounding annually. So all we have to do is to substitute these values in our formula. So our P is 10,000, and then our rate is 0 0.08. And since this is annually, our N is 1. So our exponent N is still 1, and then our T is 5. And this will give us 14,693 pesos and 28 centavos. Now let's have compounding semi-annually. So let us substitute again the values. The difference is this will become 2 because this is semi-annually. Also, the exponent will change. The value of n will become 2. And this will give us 14,802 pesos and 44 centavos. Now let's have compounding quarterly. Let us substitute the values. This time, our n is 4 because there are 4 quarters in a year. So n here will also be 4. And this will give us 14,859 pesos and 47 centavos. Last one, compounding monthly. So let us substitute the values. So our n now is 12 because this is monthly. And the exponent, our n here is also 12. And this will give us 14,898 pesos and 46 centavos. I hope this illustration made you realize that more compounding gives better returns since compounding monthly gives the biggest value for the future amount. Let us answer this problem. Dawn May wanted to finish her thesis. She applied for a loan amounting to 80,000 pesos that charges 5.5% compounded monthly. How much must she repay after 3 years? So let us identify what we have here. So she applied for a loan amounting to 80,000 and this will be our P.
5.5%, 2 is 0 0.055, that will be our rate. And then compounded monthly, so our N is 12. How much must she repay after 3 years? So we are looking for the future value and our time is equal to 3. Let us recall our formula and let us substitute these values here. And this will give us 94,315 pesos and 89 centavos. This time, let us talk about the present value P at compound interest. So let us recall the formula for F. And from here, we are going to derive the formula for P. So let us divide both sides by this quantity. So this will be canceled out. So we have P is equal to F divided by the quantity 1 plus R over N raised to NT. And if we are going to move this expression up, then this exponent here will become negative. We have the same definitions for our letters here. Mrs. Urbano realized that she paid a total of 78,622 pesos and 65 centavos in her loan that was compounded quarterly with a charge of 6%. How much is the original amount of the loan that she applied six years ago? Let us identify what we have here. So Mrs. Sorbano paid a total amount of 78,622 pesos and 65 centavos. So this is our F. Compounded quarterly, so our N is 4. Charge of 6%, 1, 2, so our R is 0 0.06. How much is the original amount? So we are looking for P that she applied 6 years ago. So our T is 6. Let us recall the formula and substitute these values here. So this will give us 55,000 pesos. This is the original amount of Mrs. Sorbano's loan. Now let us talk about total number of conversion periods, NT, at compound interest. So let us solve this problem. Goyal deposited 4,000 pesos in her savings account that is compounded quarterly at 3.75%. Compute for the total number of conversions and how long before her savings accumulate to 5,000. So let us see, we have here Goyal deposited 4,000, so this will be our P. Compounded quarterly, so our N is 4, 3.75%, 12.0375 is our rate. Compute for the total number of conversions, so we're looking for NT, and how long, so we're looking for time, before her savings accumulate to 5,000. So this is the future amount. Let us recall the formula, and let us substitute these values here. First, let us divide both sides by 4,000. So 4,000 and 4,000 will be canceled out. 5,000 divided by 4,000 is 1.25 and let us copy the rest here. Let us continue. Now let us take the logarithms on both sides. Applying power law, we can now bring down NT here in front. Since we are just after NT, let us now divide both sides by these expressions. And so, this will be cancelled out. And nt is equal to the logarithm of 1.25 all over the logarithm of quantity 1 plus 0 0.0375 over 4. And this will give us 23.91. nt must be an integer, so nt is equal to 24. So, there will be a total of 24 conversions. Now, for the value of t, the total number of years for 24 conversions, since this is compounded quarterly, so let us just divide 24 by 4. And this will give us 6 years. So this means it will take 6 years before the money of Coyel, which is 4,000, accumulate to 5,000 pesos. Now let us talk about interest rate per conversion period, R, at compound interest. Clarice deposited 8,000 pesos in her savings account that is compounded semi-annually. Determine the interest rate if her savings accumulated to 10,000 pesos after 5 years. So we have here Clarice deposited 8,000 pesos, so this is our principal amount. Compounded semi-annually, so our N is 2. 
determine the interest rate. So we are looking for R. Savings accumulated to 10,000. Accumulated, meaning 10,000 is the future volume. After 5 years, so our time is 5. Let us recall the formula and let us substitute these values here. First, let us divide both sides by 8,000. So 8,000 will be cancelled out. 10,000 divided by 8,000 is 1.25 and 2 times 5 is 10. So we have 1.25 is equal to the quantity 1 plus R over 2 raised to 10. Let us continue. Since this is raised to the 10th power, let us extract the 10th root of both sides. So this one, 10th root and 10 will be cancelled out. Then the 10th root of 1.25 is 1.022565. It is better if we have at least 6 decimal places so that our interest rate will be more accurate. Now let us move 1 on the other side and then let us compute this one. Now, we have to solve for R, so we have to eliminate this 2 here. And to do that, we have to multiply both sides by 2. So, 2 here will cancel out. And this one, 2 times 0 0.022565 will give us 0 0.045130. Don't forget to convert this into percentage. So, let us move our decimal 0.2 places going to the right. So, we have 4.5130%. This is the interest rate per conversion period. Since this is semi-annually, so meaning this is the interest rate being applied every six months. Now, if we are after the nominal rate, meaning the annual interest rate, since this is semi-annually, we just have to multiply our rate by two. And this will give us 0 0.09026. Again, convert this into percentage form. And this is 9.026%. This is the annual interest rate. Now, let us talk about equivalent rate. For example, 10% compounded quarterly is how many percent compounded annually? So, let us recall our formula. Since 10% compounded quarterly should be equal to certain percent compounded annually, then F sub 1 should be equal to F sub 2. Let us substitute what we know. So, P, here, P times the quantity 1 plus 0.10 because 10%, 1, 2 is 0.10, divided by 4, this is 4 because quarterly, and then raised to NT, our N is 4, so we have 4T. On this side is still P times the quantity 1 plus, we are asked to solve for the value of R, divided by 1, this is 1 because annually. So for the exponent, our N is 1, 1 times T is still T. Since both sides have P, we can cancel them right away. And then both of our exponents have T, so let us raise both sides by 1 over T. So, T and T will cancel out also on this side. So, this will be quantity 1 plus 0.10 over 4 raised to 4 is equal to 1 plus R over 1. Next, let us move 1 on the other side and then R over 1 is still R. Computing this, it will give us 0 0.103813. Converting this into percentage, let us move our decimal point two places to the right. So our rate is 10.3813%, meaning 10% compounded quarterly is equal to 10.3813% compounded annually. Let us have another example. 2% compounded monthly is how many percent compounded semi-annually? Let us equate right away F sub 1 and F sub 2. So we have P times the quantity 1 plus 0 0.02 because 2% 1, 2 is 0 0.02 divided by 12. This is 12 because monthly. Our exponent N T since our N is 12 so we have 12 T. Equals on this side, P times the quantity 1 plus R is unknown divided by 2. This is 2 because semi-annually. Our exponent is N, T since our N is 2, so we have 2T. So again, we can cancel P right away. And then let us raise both sides by 1 over T. So T and T will be cancelled out, same on this side. 
So this will be equal to 1 plus 0 0.02 divided by 12 raised to 12 is equal to 1 plus r over 2 raised to 2. Since we want to solve for the value of r, we have to eliminate these two here. To do that, let us raise both sides by one half. So 2 and 2 will be cancelled out. Then 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6. Then let us move 1 on the other side. Let us compute for this and this will give us 0 0.010042. To solve for R, let us eliminate this 2 here. We can do that by multiplying both sides by 2. So 2 and 2 will cancel out. 2 times 0 0.010042 is 0 0.020084. Don't forget to convert this into percentage form. 1, 2, so this will be 2.0084%, meaning 2% compounded monthly is equal to 2.0084% compounded semi-annually. Now it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. <laughs> Let us answer. Chris and Chris are planning early for their 25th wedding anniversary. They deposited 200000 to a bank that offers 4% interest rate compounded semi-annually. How much will they have in their account after 8 years? So they deposited 200000 so 200000 is our P. 4%, 1, 2, so our R is 0 0.04. Compounded semi-annually, so our N is 2. How much will they have? Will. So we're looking for the future value. After 8 years, so our T is 8. Let us recall our formula and substitute these values. And this will give us 274,557 pesos and 14 centavos. Gets?